Well, my name is Steve Ridgell, and I live out in West Texas, Abilene, Texas. Got a little ranch just uh, south of there a little ways. And one of the things we always worry about in West Texas are fires. Every part of the country has a thing they worry about. We do fires, sometimes tornadoes, occasionally flood. Out in other places, they worry a lot about floods or about hurricanes or about snowstorms or on and on it goes, the things that different parts of the country worry about, worry about natural disasters. Well, out here in West Texas, you may have heard, we had the Mesquite Heat Fire burn 10,000 acres just south of Abilene. Uh, burned up 60 houses, last count I heard. It's almost contained. They're up to about 70 to 80% containment as I record this video. By the time you watch it, I hope it's 100% contained that I have heard no loss of life, though there was some livestock loss. And you know, thinking about that fire, I, I have a daughter that lives, she and her family live out that way. And the fire came within a mile of their house. They could stand out in their yard and see the fire. The evacuation came up to about a half a mile of their neighborhood. They were told to pack up, but never had to evacuate. So the Wednesday night of the Mesquite Heat Fire, we were obviously out there helping them load things up and decide what to try to salvage and what to let go in case the fire came through. We ended up taking her teenage kids and all the pets up to our house in, in North Abilene and, and we kept them. Julie and her husband Tim stayed there to see what was going to happen and the fire ended up not getting to their neighborhood. So all of that to say that I learned three things from thinking about the Mesquite Heat Fire. Number one, you need to be prepared. I was amazed how many people were running around not having a clue what to do, how to pack up, what to save, what to salvage, didn't know where all their important papers were, didn't know where the, what things even were valuable to them. Now, I appreciate my daughter because she's pretty organized. I mean, she knew where their papers were. She knew where the important stuff was, the sentimental value, and, and they packed up fairly quickly. And so it dawns on me, it wouldn't hurt any of us to kind of prepare for a natural disaster your important papers, your survival things, th those kind of things. But it also strikes me on a deeper level, you know, we ought to be prepared not for disaster, but if you're a Christian for the best news ever, for the time the Lord comes back. Don't leave things undone. Tell the people you love that you love them. Uh, do the things that are matter to you. Do them now. Serve Jesus in your life because one day, and nobody knows when it is, Jesus is going to show back up. I'm prepared for that, and I'm ready for that. And if you're not a Christian, I'd urge you to put some thought in to whether you believe Jesus is real and are you ready for him to come back. Number two, it really helps you prioritize what matters. It was interesting to hear people talk, and, and my daughter said it first. She said, you know, it's not the clothes that I'm worried about. You know, there are things that when you really face the loss of everything you have, you realize what really matters to you and what doesn't. Family matters. Your pets may matter. There are things that have great sentimental value. There are papers that are really important that she wanted to get a hold of. But so many of the material things, she and her husband, Tim, both were saying, this doesn't matter. I heard them telling their kids what really matters. That's a great thing to learn. We all need to remember in our life what matters and what doesn't. Especially, I need to know that as a Christian, what really matters and what really does not last. And the things of this world do not last. They're all going to burn someday when God recreates the heaven and the earth. And then number three, I think it's important. It reminds me of how important Christian community is. I can't tell you how many. Now, a lot of people did nice things, but I was impressed. Uh, after the fire, when, when dozens and dozens of people from people's church or their Christian community showed up to help them clean up and sift through the rubble and look for things and the thousands of meals that were cooked by people and taken to church friends and members of their church and how many people had their their truck at, rigged up with their horse trailer on the back or their cattle trailer and said we're coming to help you get your livestock or to move out what matters we'll help you evacuate you know you need friends and you need help sometimes and the mesquite heat fire reminded me of that so i would tell you just for fire purposes be ready know what's important and look, hope you have people that help. And if you're not affected, be a helper. But on a deeper level, spiritually, be prepared for the Lord to come back. Realize what's important now. 
and be a helper and be willing to have help because that's what Christian community does for each other.